Welcome to our new learning session totally dedicated to a series of books written by Laura Numeroff. All of the books feature the premise that a cascading set of events can happen if you give one of these animals something to eat. The books are adorable and we've paired each of the books with activities that are sure to delight. One of the skills that the children in our age group are learning is how to sequence events. For example, putting on your clothes, you want to start with your underwear and then add a shirt and pants and then your socks and shoes. That's creating a logical sequence that will work. It could be repeated. These books create logical sequences that are humorous but logical. So when we're watching the video, it's simple to guess that the, when you give the pigs some syrup, they're going to get sticky. Probably similar to what happens when you give syrup to your child. Now you can uh, pause the video while you're watching and talk about these between pages. You know, so as we're looking at this page with the pig, and she wants syrup. What do you think is going to happen? This idea of learning sequencing is actually a higher brain function that children are actively working on during their preschool years. They'll get better at this skill as they practice using it. Asking good questions can help with this. And you can offer opportunities to, uh, for this to actually execute those things by offering multi-part instructions. A, an example of that was, can you get your jacket and backpack and meet me at the door? These opportunities will give them the practice to use the skills that they'll need at school. Obviously, they need to get the jacket and the backpack and come to the door. Otherwise, they're going to find they're going to go get their jacket and then go to the door, get the backpack and come to the door. Uh, but seeing them in sequence will make them come out right. This is the first book in this series is actually if you give a mouse a cookie. It was originally written to be just a, a singleton, but the book was so popular that the, her fans asked for more and more she's given them. There are now 17 books in the series. Our next book, If You Give a, pa a Pig a Pancake, is a delightful little pig who is so polite um, very similar to the ones we're seeing at Camilla's house. Um, and, um, well, things don't turn out quite as clean and simple as that. My favorite, I think, though, is if you uh, give a moose a muffin. I don't know. There's just something about this huge moose um, eating these tiny little muffins that I think is very funny. So let's get started on the activities. Number one is we're going to actually make a mouse, a 3D mouse that can actually be mounted on a little piece of cardboard. Uh, so in your box, you're going to find a labeled bag with a cut out mouse and a piece of cardboard that's four by six. You can start your painting practice by painting the four by six cardboard, whatever color the child likes. This is where we're going to actually glue the mouse to. Now the mouse itself is cut out of egg cartons and you can see the markings that we used um, on the picture on the left, uh, which shows the, the ear part and then it's indented inside, um, which is the outside of the mouse itself. So first you want to start making the mouse the color you want it to be. Let it dry completely before adding any detail fixtures. The mouse painting will can be made easier by marking the features first and then letting them paint on top of that. Now once this detailed work is dry, you're ready to glue the mouse to the cardboard. You want to put glue heavily on the ears and on the edge and then press it to the cardboard and then leave it undisturbed for about a day. After saying all this, don't be dis surprised if your child doesn't see a mouse with that. Maybe they see a mountain or a raccoon, or a fox, or a safety cone. This is, after all, your child's creation, and whatever they make will be excited to see it. You know, the best part of art projects is that the creator of the art gets to decide what to make. The learning that takes place with art is fabulous. They learned how to use their hands, 
Um, they learn about the materials. They learn what happens when you interact those materials with other materials. And then they can make adjustments from surprises that happen during the creation process. But I think the biggest and most fun thing is just the pleasure and pride that comes from making something yourself. We hope you and your child get an opportunity to see the joy that comes from creating. Well, this is activity number two, and I know, can you believe it? I'm having you clip hair. <laughs> oh boy, a cutting activity. These always rank really high with our little learners. Now, these are actually toilet paper rolls which have um, hair snipped into the top of them. It's kind of be hard initially as they start practicing their cutting, so you may want to hold the toilet paper roll from the bottom, or they can hold their um, it with their non-dominant hand uh, from the bottom of the toilet paper roll too. And then they should try clipping a strand of hair. If you separate those strands, so it kind of looks, you know, more out like this one up here, uh, it'll make it easier. Finally, you've got a way for them to be able to cut hair without cutting any of theirs or any of your family's hair. All good, right? Uh, this is um, activity number three. Oh, but before we get started with that, I wanted to talk a little bit about clip cards. Clip cards are actually really fun. They're used a lot in early uh, childhood education. And our set is made by printing and um, laminating. But when I work with my child at home, I just use cardboard, glue, and a little bit of pictures from catalogs to do whatever I needed to do. Clip cards are really versatile. They can be used for different learning objectives. These that we're seeing are for uh, learning uh, letter sounds. The clip card on the left is actually uh, working on beginning letter sounds. Uh, that's a picture of a van, and it begins with the letter v, v, v. And so they clip the V for that beginning sound. The card on the right is working on ending sounds, bat, uh, which is what the picture is. Ends in an A-T sound or an A-T sound which unfortunately the closed clip actually covers up when it was try when we, the picture was taken. Um, but you can use these sets uh, for all sorts of things. The next set of cards that we see on the left is an object and the child is being asked to uh, tell us which of their five senses that they would use with that object. Um, I suppose you could look at the donut, uh, but personally I agree with the child, I would want to taste the donut. And so they uh, clipped the tongue. And the one in the middle is uh, a bear and they're going to use their sense of touch with the bear. The far one on the right is called a visual discrimination card where basically you have a colored image and then that's turned to black and white so they want to find the object that looks like the colored picture. You can see these clip cards are really versatile support learning uh, but let's get to our example. We're going to use in this session, in activity number three, uh, numeracy clip cards to help your children work on their print number recognition. How I would suggest using the cards is that you hold the card until the child is proficient at being able to open up the, the clothespin and put it on the, the object that they want. Start with having them count how many cookies there are, in this case two, and then you can point to each of the numbers and say, this is a number one, a straight number going straight down. This is number three, and you see like going over the humps, and this is the number two. So you say there's how many cookies? They repeat the number. Can you put it on the right print number? And then they open and clip it onto the correct number. Well, that's all there is for this week. Next week, we'll be making pancakes. So to make sure to check out the recipe um, and make sure you have all of the ingredients. Until then, I'll talk to you later.